Also at this time, please welcome for your second inductors, Power League Wrestling Zone, Derek Mohan and the American Eagle, Shane Simons. know this, um, but I had actually started my training out in uh, Hamill, Minnesota uh, with uh, Brad Rangins um, out in Minnesota. Um, we had a lot of special uh, guys there who had worked the, in the business. Uh, Kurt Hennig used to come by, uh, the Steiner Brothers, and we worked out at the Road Warriors gym. Um, during that time, I came down with, uh, with an illness, and I had to return home after only four weeks of the training. And um, a lot of people don't know that I suffer from panic and anxiety disorder. And it's tough in the ring um, when you do that. And um, Carlos was, uh, we were working both at McCoy Stadium. We had a love of the, of the business. And um, we wound up uh, hooking up with Paul. And I told Paul um, what I wanted to do. He knew about my panic and anxiety disorder, and he still wanted to take me on um, as a student. And uh, he forced me to face the panic and anxiety in the ring. Um, my dad had died at 48, and I said, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life, if I, if I can. And Paul, uh, Paul taught me that. And uh, Paul's always been um, my dad in the, in the, uh, in the business. Um, he's always been there for me. He's always you know, helped me with the decisions when I was green, and you know, even to, the, to this day. Um, I, trusted Paul, I, I trust Paul with my life as a wrestler and as a friend. Uh, we've battled everywhere. Um, in crazy arenas, up and down, you know, the whole East Coast. I mean, it's, it's been crazy. Um, I've had a lot, a, lot of, a lot of personal problems, and so has Paul. We've helped each other a lot inside and, and outside the ring. And like I said, with my panic, he just, he was, he was really good. And 11 years ago, he, uh, he respected that I was, I was taking care of my grandmother and my aunt at the time, and I was working at the Tucker Red Sox, and I had a, a um, a lot of things going on, but he had told me, and I, I was also told from you know a couple of promoters, Jeff Costa, that if I had done full time, you know, if I dedicated my life full time to the business of wrestling, I probably could have made it. Some people would speculate yes or no, but just to hear that, you know, from from Paul was a was a huge compliment. Um, and now Paul's living his dream. He's running his own promotion, uh, Lima Pro Wrestling, um, which is next show is August first. So. Uh, Cheap plug there, yeah. Um, and he had told me 15 years ago when I first broke in that he was going to run his own promotion, and uh, now he is. And um, I, I really just want to simply say that you know Paul's my friend, my mentor, and, and my brother, and I really do love him with all my heart. And Paul, you know, thank you for you know all the success that you've given me, all the success you have, um, much uh, success in your new venture, and I'm a better in the person uh, in the wrestling business because of you, so thank you very much. Okay, like Derek said, we are, we're here to induct uh, Lethal Paul on into the, uh, the Hall of Fame. I've got uh, some little bit of tidbits of information that Paul was nice enough to give me, uh, some background on how he actually got into the, uh, the wrestling business. Um, Paul wanted to entertain people from a very early age, uh, from, I'm sure his mom can tell you, putting on magic shows and uh, break dancing on the corner for nickels. And this, is the, uh, this is the son of a new Bedford firefighter. So imagine being the guy driving the engine down the street and seeing your kid break dancing on the corner. Uh, so. So Paul always wanted to entertain people since he was a little kid. He started watching uh, wrestling around uh, seven years of age, and he was hooked right away. He says that um, the first match he can remember clearly was uh, a tag match with um, Rick Martel and Tony Gurria 
working with the Samoans for the, uh, the tag team titles. Uh, at that time also, some of the guys he remembered, uh, Tony Atlas and uh, Hulk Hogan, who was just breaking in as, as a heel at that time. And Paul says, at, even at that young of an age, he was already watching these guys and, and trying to figure out the spots, trying to think of what, what these guys gonna do next. So um, as he grew older, he was, uh, he was driving past this mill building every day in New Bedford that had a big sign out front, become a pro wrestler. And this was for uh, the New England wrestling promotion as it was known at the time, now known as Top Row Promotions, but they were just New England wrestling. And he says it was probably around the 17th time he drove by the building, he finally decided, okay, I'm gonna give this a shot. So he, uh, he called the phone number and he got the information as to uh, how to go about being trained. Uh, he started his training there with uh, the former WWWF preliminary guy, uh, I'm sure a lot of people in this area know Silvano Souza. And uh, that's where he got his, his basic background from. At that time, uh, the promoter, Joe Eugenio, brought in a guy by the name of Gino Caruso, who was uh, who's the son of the original spoiler. And that's when Paul really began to, uh, to learn his craft. That's where his, his career began to take off. Uh, Gino Caruso told Paul at the time, you're too small to be a heavyweight and you're too big to be a high flyer. So we're just gonna work on making you a well-rounded guy. And that's what, that's what happened with Paul. He just, uh, he learned the power moves, he learned the high flying moves. I mean, if you know Paul, when you see him go up to the top rope for a moonsault, it's incredible. Um, I mean, I know a moonsault's not the most spectacular move nowadays, but back in the, the early 90s when guys were first just starting to do that, to see Paul, a guy Paul size do that was, was pretty impressive. Um, so he made his debut on July 11th, 1991 at a, a warehouse building that uh, Joe Eugenio was running at on Belleville Avenue in New Bedford against a guy by the name of Shockwave. And for some reason, Silvano Souza couldn't say the name Lazan. And he, Paul ended up being called Paul Lazard. L-I-Z-A-R-D. -L and uh, that's where he got his first gimmick as the Lizard Man. Full of green face paint and all. And I can see his sisters over here laughing at him. I'm sure you guys remember that stuff. But in his first match with Shockwave, uh, I guess the finisher was a spine buster and Paul was knocked out cold. So Shockwave just uh, covered him and they helped him to the back. Paul rode it out the rest of the weekend and uh, come Monday he showed up to practice. And uh, a lot of the boys didn't, didn't think Paul was going to come back after that first, that first match and being knocked out and uh, he was accepted by all the boys immediately from there. They had his respect. So a little bit, a little bit more further down the line, uh, his first year in the business, they, uh, they tagged Paul up with brutal Bob Evans. Uh, Bob was the peacekeeper, Bob Evans, and uh, Paul was working the lizard man gimmick and they, they captured the New England wrestling tag team titles. They lost the tag belts and uh, Paul broke away and decided to start his own organization with uh, a guy by the name of Frank Castahina and his son Nick, who would go on to be known as Nick Steele. Uh, another guy that helped out with that was uh, Brian Briga, who was the scorpion, if you remember the Papa Shango spot where uh, he lit the guy's boots on fire on, on uh, Saturday Morning Superstars. He was another guy that helped out with Coastal Pro Wrestling. So they didn't really know what they were doing, but uh, as Paul says, they were, they were ready to take on the world with this promotion. Um, Paul and Nick opened up their own school and started training people. And uh, that's where uh, Derek and I first got our start in the business. Uh, Coastal Pro didn't last as long as they, uh, they would have liked. Um, but Paul did have uh, some success there before it folded up. He uh, was a tag team champion with uh, PJ Walker and also the, uh, the heavyweight champion. Uh, Coastal folded, 
Paul returned to New England wrestling for a short time, and then he went on to work for Big City Mike and John Callahan in New England Pro Wrestling, uh, which is where he got his taste of, first taste of working with some internationally known superstars such as Tony Atlas, Nikolai Volkov, Eric Watts, and uh, the Eliminators, Perry Saturn and John Cronus. He also got some work uh, with the Savoldis in ICW through Big City Mike, and uh, started working all up and down the East Coast, holding the uh, Commonwealth Championship Wrestling Heavyweight title, as well as the Power League Wrestling Heavyweight title. Um, Paul decided around 1998, 1999, that uh, the bumps and so forth were starting to take toll on his body, and he decided to go into semi-retirement and uh, started working a limited schedule um, from 1999 through approximately 2007. And uh, if you've ever seen some of the, the characters and some of the ideas that Paul comes out with, it's, it's just crazy stuff. He worked as uh, a manager for Alex Payne uh, as Sigmund, which I guess you could say resembled Shrek, painted his whole face and head green and, and uh, came out in a, in a monk's robe and uh, it was quite the sight. And uh, most recently, which I think is the best gimmick he ever came up with is uh, Stuart the Doll Maker. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but it's, it's quite funny. Uh, and as Derek mentioned, uh, Paul always wanted to, to uh, start his own promotion, and uh, just at the beginning of this year in 2009, he was successful in starting Lethal Pro Wrestling in Fall River. Um, so, as you can see, Paul's had a, uh, a lengthy, successful career here in the New England area. Um, I first met Paul, like I said, in, in 1991, 92, working for Power League Wrestling, uh, back when Bob Evans first started it, before it resembled anything at all of a wrestling promotion. It's basically a bunch of kids in uh, what I can only describe as a, as a sandbox with, uh, with high school gym mats thrown into it, and clothesline as the ropes. And, uh, and Bob and Paul had already started their training with Silvano Souza and Joe Eugenio, and uh, they knew the basics, and they, they were trying to teach us. And I remember Paul coming in and uh, just being nothing but nice right from the get-go when he could have you know, kind of big leagued us. We were all you know, 15, 16 years old. And uh, picking up Tommy D over his head in a six-man tag match and uh, just letting him down ever so gently into a high cross body press um, when he could have tossed him around like a sack of potatoes. Um, Uh, Paul and I have, have, have been opponents, we've been tag team partners, we've gone on family vacations together. Um, there's not enough I can say about, about Paul Lazan. Um, so I'm proud to call him uh, my trainer, my friend, my opponent, my tag team partner. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce, in, excuse me, induct him into the New England Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame class of 2009. to whom which I feel have done a million more things than I have in this business. But uh, I thank everyone, and I am truly humbled to stand up here before you. Um, I don't remember half of the stories these guys told, but I guess they happened. Uh, <laughs> after the eighth concussion, I think I, uh, I forgot some of the road stories and things like that. <laughs> I just want to thank my family for being here, uh, to whom which, over my 20 years of talking about wrestling this and wrestling that, 
They never supported me, and then a good friend came to me and said, you know something? You're not in the ring anymore, stupid. You're not the one getting hurt, because their support lately has been 100%, and I thank them very much. I want to thank my girlfriend for being here. Thank you for all your support. I want to thank uh, Alex and Amanda for filling the void that I never thought I needed, but now I know that I do. And I just want to thank everyone that ever got in the ring with me and took their life into their own hands. <laughs> I appreciate everything I've gotten from this business, and I appreciate all of the friends and the true brothers that I have made along the way. And the last thing I'd like to say in closing is, um, this is gonna be tough for me to get through, please bear with me. Uh, my dad, he um, hated everything I did as a kid because he felt I was wasting my time with a lot of things and wrestling was no exception. Uh, you know, it was, it was really tough and to get the, the, my dad to be proud of me was a real huge thing in my life. And um, I remember one day he said to me, after all of what I did was playing and not getting serious and play fighting and you know, all the things that I did, I remember he said to me one day that, what is it about this wrestling that you're so infatuated with? What is it that makes you continue to go? And I said, you know what, Dad? I don't know, but I love it. And he looked back at me, and for the first time he said, if you love it so much, then damn it, get out there and do it. And do it to the best of your ability. Well, you know what, Dad? This is for you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>